What's going on guys, Dropaduski here. Today we're going to be going over our suggested starter builds for the Blight League in Path of Exile. Now the Blight League is a tower defense league within an action RPG. And even though I have no idea what to expect from this, when selecting builds to recommend to you guys today, I wanted to make sure that the primary objective is that they would perform well against the new league mechanic. Now, all of these builds, as always, are affordable and easy to get rolling. They're a lot of fun to play, and specifically for today's suggestions, they either chain or cover a large area of effect, so that as you can see the monsters running down the rails, hopefully all of these skills will give you the ability to do a lot of damage in a larger area, making it easier to control the mobs as they make their way down the tracks towards the towers. Now. For this specifically, I think we have six builds we're going to feature today, but I will also make some suggestions as to others that are potential really, really good starters. I hope everybody has a great Blight League, and without further ado, let's jump into it. The first build we're going to talk about today is Kayela's Slave Driver Spectre Necromancer. Now, these Slave Drivers are different than the typical Solar Guards you're used to seeing, and I ended up playing this build at the end of the Legion League, and it was so powerful, it was unbelievable. I was easily Deathless Uber Elder farming many, many times throughout the end of the League, and I took this well well down into the delve. I think we're six, seven hundred area. So it's just a very, very powerful build. Now, Spectres themselves are going to be very popular this league as the Necromancer got a lot of changes. I think if you're looking for a Spectre build to play, this is definitely one you should take into consideration. I love the way it looks. It feels really good while you're playing and the slave drivers themselves, once you get it ramped up and rolling, the whips that shoot out and do the primary damage are just, I don't know, they're mesmerizing. I think they look really cool and you will be shocked by the amount of damage they do. I think if you're looking to do a Necromancer, this is a great pick for you guys at the start of the Blight League. The next build we're going to talk about today is Gazi TV's Vortex Cold Snap Occultist. Now, Vortex has been a popular league starter for a long time, and the reason I'm suggesting it in Blight today is as you can see behind me, when you drop the Vortex in the Cold Snap, it has a super large area of effect. Now this build itself is super cheap to get rolling, and once you get to endgame, this build is not only powerful enough to farm all of the endgame bosses, it is also super, super fast and easy to play. I mean, all you're doing is running around and dropping vortexes and slamming out ball cold snap and cold snap and things just melt. Now, for specifically for Blight League, the reason I like this is because of how large of an area you do damage in. If you can imagine standing near the different towers, putting a bunch of vortexes out as the encounter begins, the monster should funnel through and just melt. Now, gazi has been around for a long time. He's made a ton of super popular builds. I've gone through his starter guides. They're very thorough and this build ramps up over time. So you can start with a very low investment and eventually make it very, very powerful. It's gonna be super, super fun gearing and working through during the Blight League. If you're looking for something that is going to be consistent and also reliable for doing the current league mechanic, then the Vortex Occultist is a perfect pick. The next build I want to talk about is Pry Crow's Earthquake Slayer. Now, I wanted to pick something in the melee category, and first thing that came to mind was Earthquake. Now, if you look at the video behind me, you'll notice that I think that maps like this are going to be perfect for the Blight mechanic itself. And when we're specifically talking about Earthquake, as you can see, the AoE off of Earthquake covers the entire area that the Blight could potentially spawn. Now, Earthquake itself is very, very powerful. I know specifically the guide we're sharing today, this character was used to kill all the bosses, do all the content. It's very beginner friendly and it's a really nice league starter. This this build is going to do phenomenally well against Blight merely because of the, the vast 
amount of area that it can cover. Now, if you're looking to do melee and you want to do something that is going to work well for Blight, then I definitely think Earthquake is the way to go. Some other honorable mentions in the melee department, as we didn't throw a lot of melee in this list, you know, Tectonic Slam would work well, maybe even Sunder would do okay. I really think that when, when going through picking a melee character for Blight specifically, you want to make sure that it has enough coverage to cover multiple multiple action points as the blight move down the rails towards the towers. If you're gonna go melee, I definitely suggest this Earthquake build as it's very powerful, it's easy to play, and it's gonna be a lot of fun in the Blight League. The next build we're gonna take a look at is an oldie, but will definitely work well in the Blight League, and this is Mr. Sean Connor's Arc Totem uh, Hierophant. Now, Arc Totems are perfect for the way that the Blight encounters are going to work. Totems in general, I think, are going to do well against this league mechanic. Now, if you take, if you notice in the background, even though Ark got a slight nerf a couple of leagues ago, when using this still currently, it feels very, very smooth and still super powerful. Ark Totems is easy to play. If you've never played it before, I actually got my very first Uber Elder kill with an Ark Totem character. You know, I fired this up yesterday to film the footage that we're using for today's suggestion. And I immediately was like, damn, I kind of want to start with this character. I love the way Arc Totems feels. It's a cheap character to get rolling, but you can also put a lot of investment into it if you enjoy it and want to make it super powerful at endgame. This build is super consistent. And another nice thing about uh, specifically Mr. Sean Connor's guide is that he also has guides to other totem builds in the in the starter. I think there's Flame Blast and a couple others. They're all very, very thorough, a lot of imagery. For those of you guys that are brand new players out there, the guide is very, very nice. I think if you're looking for a consistent League Starter, Arc Totems is not only a good pick, it's one that's perfectly designed for brand new players. I started with Arc Totems. It's still powerful. It's still good to use. And I think if you're looking to be successful on a budget, then this is a great build to start Blight with. The next build we're gonna talk about is Keeper of Stars, Max Block Gladiator Herald of Agony. Now, Herald of Agony is it has typically been one of the strongest consistent pet characters in Path of Exile since it was released a couple of leagues ago. This build specifically we're featuring today, I like suggesting for new players as it's very tanky. You're basically building a super tank gladiator with the added bonus of having Herald of Agony there to basically destroy all the mobs as you run through. Now, I myself personally are gonna be doing a variation of Herald of Agony, so I definitely like making it a suggestion for brand new players. If you're looking for something that's easy, I mean super easy to level, Herald can carry you through leveling with ease, then I definitely suggest Keeper of Stars, Max Block, Gladiator, Herald of Agony. I do feel that it's gonna do fairly well against the Blight mechanic itself and the added bonus is that it can also do all the end game bosses. It delves really well. And like I said, this thing is a super tank. So if you're looking for a fun build to play, definitely keep this one in mind. The last build we're gonna take a look at today is Brittle Knees Scourge Arrow Trickster. Now Scourge Arrow is a perfect pick if you're looking to do a bow based character for the Blight League. Now once you get the additional arrow, the Scourge Arrows will shoot out in a V. So if you've got the monsters funneling down towards you, you can just sit and spam those Scourge Arrows and it's going to rain death into the center there, helping you to clear out those Blight encounters very, very easily. Now specifically for this build that we're suggesting today, many, many people in my community stopped by and said they've been playing, you know, Brittle Knees Scourge Arrow build. They all love it. They've all said it was really, really easy to get going. It's cheap to get started and overall it just does really strong consistent damage if you guys haven't done this before or haven't seen brittle knee you should definitely check out some of her builds as she's got a lot of really good ones and also some unique ones and this one specifically is going to do very well against the blight league so if you're looking to do a bow based character definitely check this one out all right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Now, a couple of things I want to mention before we wrap up. Remember, keep in mind that when selecting a map, just like you're seeing behind us, this is the Fungal Cavern, they are going, I think the Blight mechanic is going to do best when you can funnel that Blight infection 
in a very small condensed area. This is going to be one of the first leagues where I see that we're not actually actively looking to farm maps that are super wide and spread out. I think th these maps are going to actually do better as it's going to be much easier to control the blight. Now in the builds that we suggested today, these are all very, very good in a sense that they can, if you have the blight coming down these paths, then you can easily get maximize damage coverage in those areas right other builds that you know i'd like to mention divine iron totems i think that would do well as we said before tectonic slam would do well remember when selecting a build to start you're gonna want something that has that wide aoe coverage now necromancer specifically there are a ton of options out there i know all we covered was the slave driver specters as that's my favorite right now but i mean whether you go with a zombie based character or you eventually move into the new carrion golem i think that necros are going to be a blast to play this league so if you've never done a necro before this is definitely a league to check that out now guys don't forget i have a ton of other videos for you new players out there whether it's learning about the atlas get you know dipping your toes into craft crafting, understanding speed farming, all of that stuff. I have well-designed playlists in on my channel that you guys can go through that should help immensely with getting into Path of Exile. Now, if you haven't seen the Twitch stream, it's twitch.tv slash dropadooski. I'll be streaming PoE all weekend long. And then next week, I'm going to start my new schedule, which will be 8 a.m. to noon, uh, World of Warcraft. And then from 2 p.m. until 5 or 6 or six or seven, we'll be doing Path of Exile. I cannot wait to jump into the Blight League. I've been really nervous about it being tower defense as I've never really liked tower defense, but if anybody can do this, I believe GGG can do it. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or stop by the live stream anytime and we'll get you covered. You can also jump in the Discord channel and ask questions any time of day, day or night. Thank you guys so much for all the support. We will see you tomorrow night at Blight and good luck with the new league. Peace.